What's been the response in the medical world to your study showing how diet can dramatically reduce or eliminate heart disease? Ignoring it year after year after year, questioning it. Um, and sometimes just complete unfamiliarity. I mean, go grab a cardiologist and say, who's Dean Ornish? Who's Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn? Who's Nathan Pritikin? And uh, I think there's a good chance that more than half would say, I don't know who those people are and I've never watched Forks Over Knives, which is sad because as uh, some of the listeners and viewers know, it's as far back as 2010, Medicare and Medicaid approved, you've had a heart attack, you want to optimize your health, you want to go to cardiac rehab, which is an exercise program. Um, but you want to do more than the average patient, and you really want to have a great outcome, that they approve for payment a Pritikin cardiac rehab program that teaches plant-based diets to heart patients, an Ornish cardiac rehab program, and that there are dozens, if not more than 100 of these um, centers available, unfortunately, only for people who already had an event, a heart attack, a bypass, a stent, even those at risk for transplant, not for the person that's working to avoid needing a bypass. That person has to still kind of do this on their own, but insurance will pay for it. And physicians don't know that, that in their own community, they can send a patient or send themselves. And the weight of the data is so impressive that insurance companies actually will pay for a program that people learn how to cook and how to shop and how to manage stress and how to do some fitness and yoga at home in addition to just the standard rehab. So um, we just keep chipping away. And I think the newer generation of younger residents and physicians are a little bit more aware and a little bit more open-minded to it because the culture in general has been talking more about plant-based diets in the last decade than when some of the senior physicians grew up. They don't even, I mean, I read the notes from chiefs of cardiology at universities that I share patients with. No questions about diet, no advice about diet. It's not even on the menu. And I, I hear from patients that tell me, when I asked my endocrinologist about my thyroid and what diet, the answer was, I don't recommend diet. I only recommend prescription drugs. Frustrating, common, we got a long way to go. What affects sex drive and how do you keep it strong in your 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s? Or is that not realistic? No, it is the goal to have good libido and good performance uh, throughout your entire life and hopefully a very long and healthy life. There is no reason, and there are plenty of examples of uh, you know people in their 80s and 90s that are still enjoying active sex lives and you know, successful in terms of the mechanics of it all. Uh, however, um, all the inputs that are dragging our health down from our processed food diet, high in salt and fat and chemicals and additives, uh, to the obesity, to the diabetes, blood pressure, cholesterol, development of cardiovascular disease, as well as a lot of environmental factors we didn't worry so much about 50 years ago, the quality of the water we drink, the air we drink, the lotions and uh, other things we put on our body that absorb through our skin. Um, it's by age 50, 50% 50 of men are having erectile dysfunction in a serious way. My cardiology practice is very much involved in sexual health. It's a medical topic that uh, men want to talk about. Sometimes women want to talk about uh, in terms of their own uh, libido or their partner's libido. Uh, it destroys people's lives, their confidence. Uh, be a single guy in your early 50s with severe erectile dysfunction and try and date. Uh, it really, these are conversations I have with patients. So, you know, as always, the best plan is prevention. Keep your weight down, get your fitness, don't smoke, eat healthy, keep your arteries clean, get your arteries checked, get your labs checked, and you will likely not develop the problem. Um, if you're already in a state where you have disease, it's one more motivation. And I think it's a very strong motivator, even more sometimes than avoiding bypass or dementia, um, that guys are pretty desperate and I will include women in the mix too, to try and regain their full sexual health. It's very, very 
um, achievable to improve uh, diminished sexual drive, diminished sexual performance, and get back in the saddle fully. And we don't talk about it. You know, it's also clearly a risk that there's heart disease in the patient with sexual dysfunction, and that has to be addressed. But once that's cleared up, you have or don't have heart disease. And sometimes it's obvious from the history. Sometimes you got to do that heart calcium scan and lab work. But once you've been through there, you just got to emphasize. And of all the foods that have been studied that most support good sexual health, actually fruit in a number of studies comes up over and over. And there's a fruit phobia out there. People think fruit causes diabetes, uh, which it doesn't. Uh, fruit juice isn't a great choice. And soda pop is not a great choice. But eat your apple, you're not going to get diabetes from an apple. And you're also going to get better sexual health from an apple. So uh, be sure in your daily activity, you're getting two or three servings of fruit in your diet, at least. 